All right, hey everybody. Um, we are live on the Facebook page, so come on in, tell us where you're from. We're excited to get started today. We're gonna be doing a video today, a little bit on diabetes and kind of covering what the patho looks like and some of the nursing care, but we're gonna really cover heavily on DKA. So why we're having people come in and, and telling us where they're from and the nursing schools and all of that, um, we're gonna make some announcements for you guys because we have a lot of really awesome opportunities coming up that we definitely- Why? No, keep going. Keep it shut off. Oh, okay. Um, so we're back. Hi. All right. So if you guys are not subscribing to our text alerts, you definitely want to do that. Um, we send out promos and um, announcements and let you know when we're going live and different kinds of things that we're offering for you guys to get smart and to learn all the things. So if you want to be a part of the text alerts, you're going to text nursing to 85100 and you can get and subscribe to our text alerts. Okay. We also have an Ivy League tutoring boutique. Um, and so we have all kinds of really cute things that you need for nursing school. And so um, there is a Facebook page um, that we have that's called the Ivy League Tutoring Boutique. And we have the link on our Facebook page. And so um, you guys can take a look at that and make sure that you join that. We have all kinds of really cool gifts and things like that. Um, the other thing that we have that you guys really want to get involved with is we have an Ivy League VIP page and we're really about to amp that one up pretty significantly. We do giveaways on there. We have lots of stuff from the boutique that we do giveaways for. We're going to start doing study tips and we will have promo codes so you can get discounts on some of our tutoring sessions. So you're definitely going to want to be a part of that. So there's also a link to that on our Facebook page so you can ask to join the Ivy League tutoring VIP page. Okay. Um, we also have a YouTube channel and that is going to have all of our free videos and so those free videos are, are there for you on YouTube that you can watch anytime. We have right now we have a cardiac one, we have an endocrinology that does Cushing's versus Addison's and then we, what did we do last time? Fluid and electrolytes, right? So we have that one up and then once this one is done today, um, we are going to go ahead and put that on YouTube as well. So you're definitely going to want to take a look at that. All right, so subscribe to us on YouTube that way you know every time we are loading a new video. All right. Um, so lots of ways for you guys to get connected. We also have some really big events coming up that we want you to be a part of. Um, so we have a, um, an Ivy League tutoring and simple nursing collaboration video that we're doing on the 21st. So if you, um, if you have not checked out Simple Nursing, you should do so. They're a pretty great, pretty great place to get some awesome information. And so um, their student mentor and I are going to be doing a, a co-video um, on personality disorders because people usually contact us and say they have a really hard time with psych. And so we are going to cover that. Um, that's going to be on July 21st, I think. Yeah, July 21st at 3 o'clock. That is free. It's on Facebook Live. You guys can join in. There's an event on our page, so you can RSVP to that so you're sure to, to get in on that. Um, we also have a test-taking mastery session that's coming up on July the 31st at 11 o'clock, and all of these times are central time, so if you're in a different time zone, just know that we are in, um, in central time. Um, we're in Texas, and that's how we do it here. So, yeah, we do. Um, so you guys need to know that whenever you are registering for these things. The test taking mastery session is pretty amazing. It's a brand new way that we have created to, to take tests. You know, what a lot of students have told us is that they really struggle with test taking. They know the information, um, but it's really, really difficult for them to show that they know the information on the test. And so we have created an eight step process to approaching test questions that has increased people's grades everywhere. So you definitely want to take advantage of that. Um, there is a event link that you can go to on our Facebook page where you can register for that. Now that one is a paid session. You can Skype in or we're also going to be doing a Facebook Live, um, but it is something that you have to register for. All right, so we have that as well. We also are doing something really different and we're going to try something. We're going to try this out and kind of see how it works, but we're going to do a Facebook Live private page. We kind of started it with the EKG mastery session, but we're going to do one for ABGs. People really have, um, have been contacting us saying they struggle with ABGs. And this seminar is only $20. We're doing it for super ridiculously cheap. And what we're going to do is to create a private Facebook page just for people who are going to attend the seminar. We're going to start posting things a week before the seminar. And we are going to do practice things for ABGs. We're going to do study tips. We're going to tell you how to do ABGs and how to do them very easily. And then on the day of the seminar, which is the 28th, um, July 28th, 
I'm gonna do a one hour session on how to do ABGs and make them super ridiculously easy. And then for a week afterwards, you're gonna stay in this private Facebook page. We're gonna be doing practice ABGs all week. And then people who do them and do them beautifully and well, which you will after the seminar, um, we're gonna be doing some giveaways and you can win some prizes from our boutique. So you definitely wanna get involved in that. It's only 20 bucks, that is nothing. Um, and so we're gonna be doing this and kind of trying it out and seeing. So we wanna get some students involved and see how it works. So I think it's gonna be pretty amazing. And then once this works out beautifully, which which it will, because you're gonna be ABG master, yes. um, and then we will go ahead and add some other ones for you guys based on what you want to hear, what you want to learn. So come learn all the things with us, do some ABGs, we're doing personality disorders, test taking, we're doing a little bit of everything. If there is something extra that you guys really want to learn, I want you to contact us, you can inbox us, you can email us, um, whatever it is, just to let us know what kind of content that you would like. All right. So we have people rolling in, saying where they're from. Uh, the, I guess the beginning of the video didn't have sound. So okay. tell us where you're from. Ah, okay. So um, go ahead and come on in and let us know where you're joining us from, um, what nursing school that you're in, and um, and that way we can we can go ahead and get started. I want to hear from you guys and see where we're from. And then what I'm going to do is we're going to start out with the basic patho of diabetes, okay? And we're going to talk about the different hormones that are involved in that and kind of how diabetes works. We're going to do that rather quickly because I want to spend the, the majority of the session on um, DKA. That is a typically a hard concept for students, and so we're going to work really hard on that one, and it's going to be made super, super easy for you after today. Uh, Rachel has a question about the ABG seminar. She okay. says, if you can't attend due to work, will the video be up uh, at a later time? Yes, and so once you register for the session, you'll be added to the Facebook private page, and then you'll have access to that for the full two weeks. And after I'm done doing the live seminar, then we will post the recorded video, and that will be available for the next week after the session. All right, we have Jessica from Arkansas, Natasha from Joplin, Carrie from ACC Go Dolphins, oh, hey. um, oh, Erica from Staten you? Island. Oh, everybody's coming in from all kinds of places. Can you all kinds of places. Yes. So as you guys are continuing to roll in, um, we're about to go ahead and get started. We have a lot to cover today. You are more than welcome to ask any questions. There is going to be a little bit of a lag on Facebook Live. So if you we don't ask your question immediately, um, give us a minute and we'll as soon as it comes in, we'll start answering some of those questions. If we don't get to your question during the live, then we will go back and we'll answer as many questions as we can afterwards. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started because I'm excited and there's a lot to cover today. All right, yeah, there is. So I'm gonna go ahead and come to the board where we're gonna learn today about the diabetes. Diabetes. This is what most of your patients will call it. I'm very well aware that we spelled it so they like I did that. Um, so that's where we're gonna start today. And I also want to preface this and say that I am definitely not an artist. The dear Lord has not blessed me um, with that. So whenever I draw the organs, just just help me, okay? Because I'm I'm not a very good artist, but. I do know the diabetes very well. Yeah. Right? So the first assignment I'm going to give you guys, um, and I want you guys to answer. We're going to call out your answers. If you get correct answers, I don't care if you're wrong, be wrong a thousand times, at least you're trying. Okay? So I'm going to ask you guys some questions. I'm going to give you some assignments that you're going to complete. So the first thing that I want you to do while I'm drawing up our organs up here is I want you to tell me what organs are responsible in glucose management. And I want you to tell me what hormones are responsible in glucose management. All right, so you guys, I want you to answer that um, and type us your answers. And if you want to, you got bonus points if you can draw out the organs and what hormones come from those organs. All right? Bonus points. Hey, hey. I'm gonna attempt to draw a liver. It's gonna be sad. You got it, you got it. It looks like a boomerang. It's a, it's a little triangle. <laughs> oh. oh, Lord, Lord help me. Mark says pancreas. You know it. Mm-hmm. Look at my stomach. And Mark says insulin. The boot. <laughs> is it not good? It's terrible. <laughs> oh, okay. Caitlin says pancreas and liver. Erica yes. says pancreas. All right. Keep them coming, friends. There's is that a your whole pancreas? lot that goes on. Yes, that's the pancreas. Well, it's like a turd. <laughs> well, it isn't. Okay. Um, okay. So, here we go. Um, those are intestines. Do they look good? Or yeah, they not? look really good. All right. Oh, in a box. Well, Bowel in a box. <laughs> <laughs> this is us today. This is what we're doing today. We're doing this thing. Elizabeth right? said pancreas, stomach, and liver. People are getting your pictures. Okay. Okay. See? It's not quite so bad. I'm going to write the names in here just in case my artistry isn't doing it for you. Okay. All right, keep them coming, draw them out, tell me what we got. All right, so let's talk a little bit about 
diabetes. There are two different types of diabetes. Yes? All right. There's Jenny says beta cells. Two. Say that. Beta cells. Beta cells. All right. So there are two different types of diabetes. You have type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. Yes, they work a little bit differently, but both of them are going to be alterations of blood sugar. So I want to talk a little bit first about how your body does blood sugar and talk about the biggest organs that do that. Ooh, I need one more. Um, so you guys have, have called some out to me. I didn't hear anybody say our friend. Oh, this doesn't work. Uh, the kidneys, so we haven't done that yet either. But a lot of your organs are working together to maintain blood sugar, okay? Oh, that's not a good kidney. Okay. It's your best organ yet. Was it good? It's a bean. All right. So when people think about diabetes, they typically think of the pancreas. And they think that the pancreas is the only thing that is maintaining our blood sugar. But your whole entire body is working together to maintain homeostasis and to maintain a normal blood sugar. What do we need blood sugar for? What's the purpose? The purpose of blood sugar is to give us energy, right? And if we don't have energy in our cells and we don't have energy to get up and go, then we will do nothing and our cells will die. And we don't want to do nothing. We want to keep ourselves alive and happy, all right? So blood sugar's job is to give us energy, all right? The hormone that helps us to utilize our glucose is, dum -dum -dum -dum, is what? Y'all tell me some things. Charity said feed the brain and give us energy. Feed the brain and give us some energy. Nailed it. All right. So here's what we've got. So typically people start and they think of the pancreas, right? And so the biggest one that people typically think of in the pancreas is, of course, insulin. And what is insulin's job? All right. So insulin's job is to help the glucose get into the cells, right? So Ashley came in with insulin. Nice work, she Ashley. Did. Nailed it. So here are our cells, right? And our cells require energy in order to be fueled, all right? So you've got glucose that sits out here. Glucose wants to enter the cells and it wants to go in and give the cell energy. It wants to give it, it's, glucose is like the coffee for the cell, right? It wants to go in, but it can't. Because I don't have a coffee cup, I don't have a way to get in there, right? And so what insulin's job is, is insulin is going to open up a little door right here inside the cell so that the glucose can enter into the cell and be utilized for energy. So that's insulin's job, right? It's gonna open the cell to allow the glucose to come in so we can use that for energy, all right? And this is normally how our body works, right? We eat 12 Krispy Kreme donuts in the morning, mm. all right? Yes. Yeah, that sounds good, doesn't it? And your insulin level, your glucose is gonna spike, first of all, right? Our glucose is gonna go really high because we've taken in a lot of sugar. That's gonna signal my pancreas to secrete insulin to open up the doors of my cells to allow the glucose to be utilized, all right? Now, I took in 12 Krispy Kreme donuts this morning, and your body doesn't need that much glucose in order to fuel itself, okay? So if we have any excess glucose, what happens to it? Anybody know? Oh, wait, there's a delay for a second while I write up some more things. Okay, anybody have anything? Not yet, I think it's just the delay because I know you guys are super smart. Glycogen. Ah! Carrie Watkins. Go Carrie! All right, so Carrie, good job. So any excess glucose that we have is gonna come and be stored in the liver as glycogen stores. So our liver is responsible for holding all of our excess sugar. And the reason it does that is because there are periods of time whenever you go without sugar, okay? Whenever you go without sugar, your body needs some extra, but you're not taking any in, right? So let's say that you are in lecture and you've been there for three hours and it's the worst thing in the history of ever and you're tired, but they won't let you have a break because why would they? And you're hungry and you didn't eat breakfast that morning and so your sugar is gonna go low. Well, you obviously can't take in anything because you didn't bring anything, okay? So your liver is gonna click, kick in and it's gonna release some of those glycogen stores so we can utilize that glucose and we can raise up your levels, okay? So, how does the liver do that exactly? Does anybody know what hormone is secreted by the pancreas that helps us to release our glycogen stores? Don't look what I'm writing. Like we need some elevator music for the I act. know, right? I know that somebody has to do this. Tell me when. Caitlin says glucagon. Ah, nice job, Caitlin. Mm -hmm. Caitlin. Caitlin right. Hernandez. Very good. All right. 
So whenever the body senses that there is low glucose and the pancreas is going to secrete glucagon, okay? The glucagon is then going to go over to the liver and it's going to request that the liver gives us some of its glycogen stores. The glycogen stores are then going to come out of the liver and they are going to help us to increase our glucose level. So this is how we maintain homeostasis whenever we are not taking in a whole bunch of blood sugar. All right. So I'm going to say it one more time really quickly. The pancreas is going to release glucagon. That's a hormone. The glucagon is going to ask the liver kindly to please release its glycogen stores, which it has collected from all the excess sugar. Okay. Please so much. Glycogen, <laughs> yes, is going to increase our glucose level and maintain homeostasis in periods of time where you are not bringing in any sugar. Okay. Um, what else does the pancreas do? Are there any more hormones? We've said insulin and we've said glucagon. There are two more hormones, actually a couple more, but we're going to cover two today, um, that the pancreas will secrete. So let me know what those are. Okay. And if you're not writing all of this down, we're going to take a picture of the whole board and we're going to go over to the other board in a minute for DKA and we will post that for you guys too. All right, does anybody know? Amylase. Hint, they're written on the board. All right. Um, the pancreas does secrete amylase and lipase. Those are digestive enzymes that are going to help you digest your food. And they kind of do work a little bit with blood sugar because they do help you to digest food. But the biggest ones that have to do with blood sugar are amylin and somatostatin. All right. And both of those are going to help us work on the stomach. All right. They both do things that are similar. They have a couple differences. That's it, it gets pretty complicated. That's something we'll cover in another lecture. But the basics of what amylin and somatostatin do is they are going to, I'm going to write this in red so you can see where they're going. Amylin and somatostatin are going to go to your stomach and they're going to decrease acid secretion and they're going to decrease motility. Now this is in your actual stomach. You know, sometimes when people say my stomach hurts, they mean like anywhere from like right here to like their feet. Okay. That's not your stomach. Your stomach is right here. All right. So this is in your actual stomach. And so what they do is to slow down the stomach and why would I want to do that? And how does that maintain homeostasis of glucose? Okay. So how that works is that if I took in 12 Krispy Kreme donuts this morning in my stomach, it's going to dump into my small intestines. It's going to start sending out blood sugar and my blood sugar is going to go sky high. So what these hormones do is they slow down the stomach a little bit. So instead of getting 12 Krispy Kreme donuts in my bloodstream all at one time, it's going to slowly release them. Okay. So it's going to decrease it a little bit and slowly release those. So instead of having a giant spike in my blood sugar, it's going to be a little more normalized. It's still going to go up because I overindulged. Okay. But it was so good. You know, mm. it's so good. <laughs> Especially when they're hot. Mm. <laughs> exactly. So that's what somatostatin and amylin do. We know we talked about insulin and how it works. We talked about glucagon and where it's going. So you can see that all of these organs are working together to maintain homeostasis. There is a big um, hormone that is secreted by the intestines that helps us to maintain blood sugar. Does anybody know what it is? Yes, no, maybe so. It starts with an I. <laughs> It ends with the mm, cretins. Yes, it's in cretins. <laughs> Y'all are smart. Okay, so in cretins are these kind of hormone things that are involved in the intestines. This is actually your gut, not your stomach, but your gut. And what they do is they ask the pancreas for release of insulin that is dependent on the food that you took in. So if I took in for breakfast, I had a hard boiled egg and a fourth of an avocado, which of course I did because I'm very fit. Fair. Um, then that's not a ton of sugar, right? And so your incretins are not going to ask for a whole bunch of insulin to decrease that sugar. But if perchance I took in 12 Krispy Kreme donuts this morning, which of course I didn't, um, then the incretins are going to have to ask for a lot of insulin. And so they are going to ask for insulin that is glucose dependent. All right. So they ask for just enough so that way we don't dip your blood sugar too low or keep it too high. All right. So that's how incretins work and those are in your gut. So this is why most of our type two diabetes, oral diabetes medications have GI side effects. Most of them have abdominal pain or diarrhea or stomach upset because most of them work on the incretins and not specifically on insulin, which is why most of your type two diabetic oral medications do not cause hypoglycemia 
because they're working on incretins and just asking for just enough insulin that you need. Did that just blow your mind? I know, it's crazy, but that's how orals work, and that's why we don't typically see the crazy blood sugar and the hypoglycemia that we normally will with just straight insulin, okay? So these are the hormones that are working in order to maintain homeostasis for the diabetes. Okay, this is what you'll hear your patients call it all the time, the diabetes, okay? The kidneys are also working um, in order to maintain homeostasis. So the kidney's job is to kind of notice how much glucose is in your blood, and if there is too much, like if you get a blood sugar of over 250, your kidneys are gonna kick in and respond, and they're gonna start spilling some of that glucose into your urine. So you will not see um, glucosuria, or you will not see um, glucose in the urine until your blood sugar is over 250. So if you drew some labs and you don't have the blood sugar back yet, like say you didn't have a, a quick one or a glucometer that you could use, and all you did was a UA on a patient, and you found that they had glucose in the urine, then you mm -hmm. can pretty much guarantee that their blood sugar is already over 250 and we're at risk for DKA, all right? So these are the hormones that are involved, and this is how the diabetes works, okay? Now, we're gonna start talking about DKA, but we kinda have to talk for a second about exactly what diabetes is and how it works. So when you have diabetes, something in this is very messed up, all right? And in type one diabetes, who we usually see, that's usually who um, goes into DKA, um, type one diabetes they think has an autoimmune function, which means that there typically is a genetic component, but it has to have a trigger in order for that genetic component to be activated, all right? So we usually see this if it's gonna happen at the beginning, a lot of times in toddlers and little kids that have had the genetic component, they get sick, they get a virus, they get vaccines, something happened that triggered it for some reason and it triggered that gene and now they have activated this type one diabetes. So people are not born with type one diabetes, they are born with a genetic predisposition to it that requires a trigger in order to turn it on. Okay, do you like my noises today? Yeah, I'm feeling very I'm loving noisy. It. Okay. So we talked about hormones and how that works. So type one diabetes, tell me what is the biggest characteristic of type one diabetes? Okay. Um, we're gonna get a picture of this for you guys um, and we will be posting that on the Facebook page. Um, and then we're gonna talk quickly about what type one diabetes does. So tell me what you know about type one diabetes. Anything you know, give it to me all. all Insulin it. dependence. Insulin dependence. Amber Lewis. Good job, girl. What else do you know? Uh, Mariah says three Ps. Polyphagia, right. polydipsia, polyuria. Nice work, Mariah. Lack of insulin. Total lack of insulin. All right. So what do we talk about with type 1 diabetes? So the type 1 typically has a genetic component, mm. right? And then we're gonna have a trigger, so genetic plus trigger, and that's gonna cause the disease, right? So how diabetes works, or type one diabetes works, is yes, this is a total lack of insulin, okay? So if this is a lack of insulin, are they ever gonna make insulin ever again? No, they are not, okay? So what typically happens, this is why we think it's an autoimmune kind of function, is that your body starts attacking the pancreas, and when it attacks the pancreas, it destroys the beta cells, and the beta cells are responsible for producing insulin. So if your beta cells are destroyed, you're not producing any insulin, right? And so that's where the total lack of insulin comes from. They will never grow beta cells, typically. They will lack insulin and be insulin dependent for the rest of their life. So if I lack insulin, and we talked about what insulin did. Real quick, Elizabeth wants to know if there's any way they are able to pinpoint the trigger. Oh, that's a great question. Usually, yes, they can pinpoint the trigger because the kid almost always has a virus and that precipitates the type one. So I've seen several kids that have come in just sick, um, dehydrated, not feeling well, really acutely ill. I mean, type one diabetic kiddos, whenever they are going into type one the first time, are sick. You know, we have some parents that say, well, my kid's drinking a lot and my kid's peeing a lot and are they happy and running around? Yes, then your child does not have type one diabetes typically because this is an acute onset. They get sick very quickly with weight loss. Um, and so yes, we typically will say, hey, this was a stomach bug and now they're getting worse and worse and worse and worse. They're losing weight, they're dehydrated. And so typically, yes, we can see what illness caused it. All right, so genetic plus a trigger, we get a total lack of insulin. We said that insulin's job, right, is to open the door and allow the glucose to come in, okay? 
So if we have a total lack of insulin, the cell is closed, okay? And if the cell is closed, then we can't utilize any of the glucose. So this, these glucose molecules are just gonna be sitting out in our bloodstream, and it doesn't matter how many we have, they can build up and build up, and we can't use it because we don't have anything to open the door to the cell. Well, your cells have to get some kind of energy, right? So where's the next place that they're gonna try to pull energy from if they're not able to utilize any of this glucose? you guys to let me know. <clears throat> Charity says low energy, high blood sugar. Carrie says liver. Okay, they can ask the liver, that's a, that's a good thought. They can ask the liver for some glycogen stores, because we talked about glycogen earlier but they can release and dump all that glycogen and put more glucose into the bloodstream, but we're still not able to utilize it because it can't get into the cell. So it needs a quick way to just get and grab some energy, okay? Mark says proteins, Perla says fatty acids. Fats, that's it, and protein we're coming back to, so that's not a bad answer, that's a great answer too. So the next thing that it's gonna do is it's gonna break down our fats in order to utilize some of that fat for energy, all right? So when this is failing because of lack of insulin, we're now gonna break down our fats, which is why type one diabetics typically come in and say they have had rapid and quick weight loss because your body is taking all of those fat stores and they're breaking them down and utilizing them for energy. So they typically will lose a lot of weight in type one diabetes rather rapidly and without trying. When we have used all of our fat stores and we can no longer utilize, there's nothing left, then what do we break down next? Somebody already said it. The next thing we're gonna do is to start breaking down our proteins, okay? Which is our muscle, okay? Now I'm gonna go back to fats for just a second because when we break down those fats, what is our byproduct of fat breakdown? And let me know once we get to protein, what is the byproduct of that protein breakdown? Those are your two assignments. We have several that came in with ketones. Nice work, Sarah? No, Sarah? several. Oh, several, okay, several. All right, so when we break down our fats, the byproduct of our fat breakdown is going to be, what did they say? Ketones, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna have ketones that are gonna be produced. Now, ketones are acidic, so keep that in mind. They typically are going to make the body a little bit more acidic. What is the byproduct of protein breakdown? Did anybody say that one? or muscle breakdown? Ammonia. Lactic acid, close, lactic acid, all right? So once we break down our fats for energy, our body's gonna produce ketones. Once we break down protein for energy, it's gonna produce lactic acid. So let's come right here to DKA. So what did we have? We have diabetes or diabetic, right? K stands for ketones. We got the ketones from the fat breakdown. Keto. We got protein breakdown from the, and that caused lactic acid, so diabetic keto acidosis. That's where DKA comes from. Y'all with me? Everybody happy oh, and healthy? With you. They're with me. All right. So we're going to take a picture of this. We're going to post this too so you guys can remember lack of insulin. Let me put this in here. Lack of insulin. Can't utilize the glucose, so glucose is going to continue to rise. Then we break down our fats next for energy, which gives us ketones, break down our protein or muscle next, which gives us lactic acid. That puts us in DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis. Mm. Yeah. All right. We're about to give you an assignment. Get pumped. I'm going to give you, yes, I'm gonna give you two minutes to complete this chart's best of your ability, okay? So Casey's gonna come over on this side. Um, she's going to just do a shot on the chart, and I want you guys to fill in the chart, write this down on your own, and you're going to fill in the chart best you can, all right? And I'm going to explain what this looks like. So, you have a patient that comes into the ER, and these are the symptoms that we're having. You see, this says symptoms. From these symptoms, this says problems, so I want you to tell me what are the problems or what's the reason, the problem or the reason that we have these signs and symptoms. All right, 
So let's say I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you one, give you an easy one. So blood sugar 389, why do we have that? Lack of insulin, right? Which causes our blood sugar and our vessels to increase because we lack insulin. So you're gonna tell me what are the problems, what's the reason why we have these signs and symptoms. And then over here, I want you to give me the treatment. So how am I gonna fix this problem? All right, you have two minutes to fill in this chart. Your time starts now. Dum, dum, dum. If you can't see something, then I want you guys to ask, but I know my handwriting is on point, so, okay? <laughs> and I want you guys to start filling in your charts, okay? Because you're gonna need it when we start hitting this pretty hard. Remember your patho, all right? When you're going through these, remember your patho. Such a good Be smart. Be you got smart. this. And I'm gonna do the whole thing with you, so don't panic. All right, I got you. All right, the top left says polyuria, polydipsia, polyphagia, because I see the polyphagia looks really tiny, but just so you can see it, okay? You guys can do this. We believe. All right, I want you to get ready to start shouting out your answers when I ask, all right? Oh, they'll be ready. Obviously. Oh, they'll be ready. I didn't time it. Did you time it? Uh, no. I'm like, okay, you have 30 seconds. I, I probably know. shortchanged you on that one, but you guys got this. <laughs> Just fill it out best you can and we're gonna figure out the rest. Make sure you know your normal lab values because if you don't know normal values, this is gonna be a struggle for you. Okay. Struggle bus. We don't want you on the struggle bus. Nah. Mm -mm. We got you covered. All right, a few more seconds and then we're gonna hit it. All right, are you guys ready? Dum, dum, dum. All right, here we go. So, the first thing that your patient comes in with, so you're in the ER, all right, you're triage in the ER, and your patient comes in looking like this holy hell of a mess, all right? So we're gonna need to fix it and figure out why they're having these problems and how we're gonna treat them, all right? So the first thing that this patient presents with is polyuria, so they are peeing a lot. We have polydipsia. What does polydipsia mean? Come on, friends in the back. Oh, who me? Yeah. Polydipsia and polyphagia. So polydipsia means we are You'd be hungry, you'd be thirsty. Polyphagia, we are hungry. So why do we have these? What are the problems associated and why do we have them? So what happens whenever your body is lacking insulin is you're not able to utilize that blood sugar in the right way. So your brain thinks, I have no blood sugar, right? Because it's not able to recognize it or utilize it in its cells because of lack of insulin. So your brain is freaking out thinking, you don't have any blood sugar. You need energy ah. for yourself. Ah, that's so scary. Okay. And so what it says is drink more things. Eat more things. Drink more things. Eat more things. Everybody's coming in with sugar. hungry and thirsty. Yes. Yeah. All right. So we're hungry and we're thirsty because we have a complete lack of insulin. That lack of insulin does not allow us to utilize our glucose. Okay. And so your brain is starving, right? So when your brain is starving, it says eat all the things and drink all the things. Okay. So you're going to want to take in more than you normally would, but you're still going to be losing weight because remember, your body's not using any of that sugar. It's breaking down your fat, all right? So your brain is starving, so you're drinking all the things. And when you drink everything, you, of course, are going to have polyuria. That's one reason, right? So your brain triggers on and says, drink more things because we need more blood glucose. The second thing or the second reason why we have polyuria, we talked about over there on the kidneys. Your brain isn't smart enough to recognize your sugar's high, but your kidneys are. So your kidney says your sugar's too high, so it's gonna start trying to pee more to spill it out. So your kidneys are trying to get rid of it, right? All right, so they are going to increase it, right? They're gonna start increasing. Um, so kidneys are trying to dump, so you're gonna have the polyuria, you're drinking lots and you're eating lots. So how do we fix this? What was the main problem, if you look back, the main problem, the reason why we're having all of this is because your brain can't realize that there's sugar. How does your brain realize that it's sugar? You give them insulin, right? Please remember with DKA, because they like to put these on nursing exams, and it's tricky, that when you're in DKA, we need IV insulin because we need it quickly. We don't have time to wait for an injection, all right? So the treatment will be IV insulin. How will that help? Well, 
It opens up that chastity belt. It opens the cell. up exactly. So if it opens up the cell, then it's going to allow glucose to flood in. It's going to feed the brain. The brain's not going to think it's hungry, and neither will you be hungry either. Okay. So that's how that's going to fix it. All right. Blood sugar of 389. So blood sugar of 389 is pretty high, right? What's a normal blood sugar? What should you normally expect? 70 to 100 ish. 100, 70 to 110. Yeah. You know, it kind of depends on the age. And of course, you know, it's nursing. You're going to see 1,000 different levels, right? Mm -hmm. So obviously, no matter what level we use, this blood sugar is really high. So why is their blood sugar super high? Because the cells aren't taking. You can answer. Oh, because the cells aren't taking in the sugar from. All right, so since the cells can't take in the sugar, then that blood sugar just stays in the vessels, right? It just stays out there. And that is because we lack insulin. Do you see how insulin's the main problem here? Insulin. So if we lack insulin, what's the treatment gonna look like? Well, if we're missing something. Insulin. Hey, let's give it to them. And how do we do it in DKA? We do it IV. So we're gonna give them IV insulin. Mm -hmm. Really easy reminder, if you don't know, just pick insulin because it's gonna fix something somewhere, right? All right, when in doubt, this one's a little out. more tough. So I want you guys to answer. This says blood pressure of 90 over 60 with a heart rate of 115. This is a normal healthy adult, so I want you guys to tell me why you think this is. Is the blood pressure high or low? Is the heart rate high or low? And why this is working, okay? So tell me why you think this patient has this. And then fix it, so tell me what you got. Tell me what you got, what you really, really got. Tell me, tell me what you got, what you really, really got. Oh, I, I, got it. It. I got it. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> you know it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anybody? Dehydration. Dehydration. All right. So let's talk about that. So blood pressure is 90 over 60, which is low. If you watch the fluid and electrolytes video, then you will know low fluid, low pressure. All right. So we are drinking a lot, but we're peeing out just as much. Your fluid volume is actually low. Therefore, your blood pressure is going to go low, so you are hypotensive, all right? Mm -hmm. When the blood pressure goes low, how does your body compensate? Heart rate high. Yes. Natasha. The heart rate goes higher, you're going to get tachycardia because it's trying to compensate. It says, oh, your pressure's low? Let me give you some more. Let me give you some more blood. Let me give you more. Let me give you more. It doesn't very, it's not very effective, you know, but we can, that's what your body tries to do because God bless it. It's trying, mm -hmm. right? So blood pressure's going to go low, heart rate's going to go high because we are dehydrated. Why are we dehydrated? Because we have polyuria, right? Mm -hmm. Why do we have polyuria? It's got too much sugar. We have polyuria because your blood sugar is too high. Why is my blood sugar too high? No insulin. Because we lack insulin. Oh my Whoa. word, there it goes. We did it again. This is like the, what is it, six degrees of separation or something? And everybody can get back to Kevin Bacon. And get <laughs> Like, like at the end of it, it's like lacking insulin. Kevin Bacon. That's it. Insulin, insulin is Kevin Bacon. Bacon. Everybody is attached to insulin somehow. So we can fix this a couple of different ways. Yes, we, we got bolus, them, IV fluids. Yes, we definitely need to give them IV insulin to try to correct this problem. But we do want to give them a bolus of fluids. Now, fluid management is really important in DKA. So did somebody say what fluid we want to give? Uh, someone said normal saline. Normal saline. All right, let's talk about that. Now, you do want to give them normal saline at the beginning, and there's a couple of reasons why. I'm going to give you one of them, and we're going to come back to the other reason here in a minute when we get to the rest of these. So you're going Linda to give says hyperosmolality. Nice. So we're going to give them a normal saline bolus, all right, and we're going to put them on IV fluids, right? That's going to help to correct the dehydration, okay? Now, normal saline we want to give right now because their blood sugar is so high. Bonus question, okay? We don't want to give them anything with dextrose. That's what I'm saying with that one. So we're going to give a normal saline. Now, can anybody tell me at what blood sugar level do we switch from normal saline mm. to a different fluid, and what's the fluid that we give? You can't answer because I know you know. Um, I really like tutoring students are in here, and they're like popping this off like crazy, so if you guys want to be able to be like boom, 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 come see us, all right? Because they're in here like popping these off like they made DKA, all right? <laughs> so <clears throat> I want you guys to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold on to that question for a second, and if anybody answers it, we'll, we'll come we in. We got people coming in with 250. Okay, that's it. Nice job, guys. So once our blood sugar level gets down to 250, we're going to switch over to a different fluid. Did anybody tell me what it was? D5? D5. Question mark? Who said that? Uh, Olga smart. and several other people. Olga, nice work, people. All right. And Linda. So, and Linda, good job. All right, so we're going to switch over to a D5. And what is the reason why we'd switch over to a D5? D stands for dextrose. So that would be dextrose 5%. Now, if their blood sugar is 250, why would I want to switch over to a sugar concentration? That doesn't make any sense. So if anybody wants to answer that question, I want you to pop on in and we'll come back to that in a second. 
So right now, because their blood sugar is so high, I'm going to give a normal saline bolus. All right. Now we've got ketones. All right. Why does our patient have ketones? We talked about it over there, so I'm expecting you to be able to pop in with this real quick and really easy. Oh, they got this. It's just I a know leg. They did. All right. So we talked over there lots of times, so you guys should know this, that whenever we are lacking insulin, we can't utilize any of our blood sugar because it can't get into the cell. The next thing that your body is going to break down is... Give them one more second. They got it. Uh, oh, too I late. Know, I lost it. <laughs> All right, so we're breaking down our fats, and the byproduct of fat breakdown is ketones, okay? So we're going to see ketones in the urine. That's where you're going to see ketones. Now, why are we breaking down fats? We're breaking down fats because we can't utilize our glucose because we lack insulin, right? And so if you want to help your body who lacks insulin, you want to give it insulin. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful Ivy League tutoring student. <laughs> IV insulin, that's gonna fix that problem. Then you're gonna be able to break down sugar instead. You're not gonna break down your ketones, and everybody's gonna be happy with life. Alright. Okay, these get a little more complicated. Are you guys ready? Ouch. Oh, All they're right. ready. All right, I knew it. So I want you guys to talk about, let's do our, we're gonna do our pH with our HCO3 and our CO2 level. So I want you to give me normal pH levels, normal PaCO2 levels, and normal HCO3 levels, and then tell me why these are altered. Tell me if they're high or low, and then why. All right, I'm gonna give you 15 seconds to do that. Or else I take a drink. All right, Olga said low bicarb, metabolic acidosis. What else we got? pH, 7.35 to 7.45, somebody answering. All right, Jennifer come in with 7.35 to 7.45 for pH. All right, Denise, good job. Paul says low pH, that's right. So I want you guys to give me normal levels, but then interpret them for me. All right, tell me what they mean, okay? Now this one's sort of weird. Right? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write the normal levels for you, that way when we take a picture of this later, you know. So, all right, friends at Ivy League Tutoring or people here, I want you guys to tell me what is the normal HCO3 level? 22 to 20, no, uh -huh. 26, 22 to 26. 22 to 26, all right. So this is our normal level. So if we have 16, then that obviously means that this level is low. PCO2, what's a normal CO2 level? Elizabeth said 22 to 26. Got it, nice work. What about CO2? I think I saw a lot of people say this one. Yeah. How I like to remember CO2 is you start out with your pH, which looks like this. And for some reason, every nursing student in history of ever can remember pH. I don't know why, but you guys can. So if it's 7.35 to 7.45 is a normal pH, just bring down these two numbers, and that is your CO2. So 35 to 45 is your normal CO2 level. You like that? How oh, you like that? Oh, oh, Mind oh. blown. Okay, so my normal CO2 level is 35 to 45. If this is 28, then it obviously is low. And then my pH, 7.31. Lots of you guys have already told us that the normal is 7.35 to 7.45. Therefore, if we're at 7.31, then we are low. Okay, so let's start out with the pH. So the pH is low. Tell me why the pH is low on your patient. If it's low, then that means they're acidotic, right? And since this is not a respiratory issue, this is a metabolic problem, right? We're gonna be in metabolic acidosis. 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 So we talked about on the other board that the byproduct of fat breakdown is gonna be ketones, right? Ketones are a little bit acidic. So here's where we're gonna start with the acidosis. Then once we run out of fat to break down, then we're gonna break down protein next, and the byproduct of protein breakdown was Lactic acid, very good. And so that's Amen said due to increase of lactic acid. Very and nice. Carrie said protein breakdown. Good job, guys. So you're going to be in metabolic acidosis because we have had muscle and protein breakdown in order to get energy. Get energy. Yes. All right. So how do we fix this? Hey. Does anybody know how to fix acidosis? My friend, yes. All right, so we can give some sodium bicarb. Bicarb is an acid or a base. It's a base. base. All right. All about so we're gonna give base. some sodium bicarb. All right. No acid. And the sodium bicarb is a base, so that's gonna offset our acid. And this is also gonna come in handy later too. You're gonna see 
All of this is about to be intertwined in this beautiful spider web of DKA. Everything's connected. It's Kevin Bacon, right? We're gonna come Kevin back to it. Bacon. Everything's gonna be connected. So we're gonna get some sodium bicarb to help fix this. Now, when your pH level goes down, all right, we know that we're kind of acidotic, yes? Mm -hmm. Now let's talk, I'm not gonna talk a ton about ABGs because you need to come to our seminar and learn all the different things. However, your CO2, is that your acid or your base? It's your acid, right? Now this one's weird. Because if you're in acidosis, wouldn't you expect your acid to be high? Yes. <laughs> However, in DKA, this is jacked up. Are you guys ready to have your mind blown again? Oh, all my friends over here are like, I know, I know, I know. You guys have got to get in here. You're going to know all the things. Okay. So what happens whenever we have acidosis, okay, this is metabolic. You have two different systems. You have respiratory and you have metabolic. When your metabolic is broken, your respiratory is going to come in and save the day. So your respiratory rate is going to go weird and fast to blow out all of the acid because you're acidotic and it wants to get rid of acid. Since CO2 is my acid, I'm going to attempt to blow out that CO2 very quickly to help my acid and to help my metabolic system. So I go acidotic, I'm in metabolic acidosis, metabolic is broken. Respiratory is going to come in and say, I got you, and it's going to do Claudia this. Claudia said, Kuzma. Yes, Claudia. Good yeah. job, Claudia. That's Kuzma's breathing. So they're going to and attempt to blow off that CO2. So the reason why the CO2 is low is because of Kuzma's breathing, and this is actually a compensatory mechanism. So this is actually helpful, okay? So the Kuzma's breathing is helpful, it is compensatory, but it is going to really jack up your CO2 level, all right? But that's why you're gonna see that. Now let's talk about our HCO3. Is that an acid or a base? Your HCO3, is your bicarb, we already talked about bicarb earlier, we know that it was a, all about the base. Mm -hmm. about the base. So this is your base. So if you are acidotic, then of course your base is going to be low because you are acidotic, okay? So the reason why our HCO3 is so low is because of our metabolic acidosis. We know our metabolic acidosis was because of breakdown of your protein and muscle, and that happened because you used all your fat, and that happened because you didn't have any sugar that you could use because of lack of insulin. Back to Kevin Bacon. Boom, boom, boom. Okay? So you're going to have Kuzma's breathing. So how would I fix the CO2 level? It's really kind of hard to do that because you have a lot of pathways that's going along with it. So I'm just going to let them do this. All right? We let them Kuzma's breathing, and that's actually because it is compensatory. It's actually the treatment. Okay, so we're gonna let them Kuzma's breathe for a period of time because it is helping out our metabolic acidosis. If anybody has any questions on that, say so now, but I think that you guys are gonna have it spot on. It was beautiful, okay? All right, so our metabolic acidosis, how did we fix that? We fixed our metabolic acidosis with some sodium bicarb. Yeah, All we right. did. Yeah, we did. All right, so we are caught up. Now we're about to do some electrolytes. What? Okay. okay. So, if the ABGs didn't get you, now the electrolytes are coming for you, but you will not be left behind because we got you. Okay, so if you watch the fluid and electrolytes that we did, then you know that sodium and potassium go on a seesaw. Okay, now I want you to tell me what the normal level for potassium is, if this is high or low, normal level of sodium if it's high or low, and then tell me why these are off. Okay? While you guys are doing that in writing, I'm going to talk quickly about glucosuria because we've already talked about it, so I want to make sure it's on your chart so you can see it later. So glucosuria, that means that we have glucose spilled out in the urine. Remember when the blood sugar goes over 250. Linda says 3.5 to 5. Good. Your kidneys are going to kick in, okay? The kidneys are going to spill glucose into the urine. That's only if your glucose goes over 250, all right? In order to fix this, we need to be able to utilize this, and so we are going to give them, of course, our friend... Kevin Bacon or I Kevin use one. Bacon. <laughs> I never used that before. It's actually really funny. All right. <laughs> they said potassium is high. Okay. Sodium is low. All right. So potassium's normal is 3.5 to 5, which means that this is high. Bundle of bananas. Okay. The sodium, what they say? 135? To 145. To 145. Okay. So that is obviously low which makes sense because we go on a seesaw, so now we just need to figure out why potassium is high. There is a pump. Mariah says potassium are, is too high, insulin will help bring it back into the cell. Okay, that's a beautiful, who said that? 
Uh, Mariah. Mariah, okay. Mariah, that is excellent and true because insulin and potassium also go on a pump. So as insulin wants to be drawn into the cell, okay, or vice versa, when insulin gets drawn into the cell because we're giving it IV, the potassium is going to come out in order to usually try to be excreted, okay? So what we're going to do here or what happens is because we have a complete lack of insulin, and there is an insulin and potassium pump. So if I have no insulin, okay, so insulin is very low, then that means that there's nothing switching them inside and out of the cells. Therefore, my potassium level is going to be high. All right? So that is why we have a high potassium because of our complete lack of insulin. Insulin and potassium go on a pump. So she was right, Mary was right in saying that if we give IV insulin, that's gonna correct this problem. My insulin level is going to go up, meaning that's gonna drive my potassium down, okay? We're running out of time, but I quickly wanna give you a bonus problem. There are seven antidotes to hyperkalemia, okay? And we may use a bunch of them. So I want you to tell me if you know the full seven. Don't give me one, only comment if you know the full seven, all right? Maybe it's six, it's six, no, it's seven. Okay, and then we will, we'll do that as your homework for this afternoon, okay? All right, so then we know that insulin and potassium go on a pump, right? So then we also know that potassium and sodium go on a pump. So if my potassium is high, then my sodium level is going to be low, right? So how do I fix that? Elizabeth said sodium is low because they're dehydrated. Okay, sodium can be low because they're dehydrated too, I agree. And then we have all of these pumps that are intricately working together. And Denise okay? and Mark say k exalate k exalate is one of them. That is the antidote to hyperkalemia, nice job. So we have this pump that's working. So this pump happened and then this pump happened. And so in order to increase our sodium, we already had the fix on our treatment. And what was it? We're giving them normal saline, right? So we are giving them normal saline bolus that will help to lightly increase my sodium. Because remember, we never want to increase sodium quickly or decrease it quickly because it causes cerebral edema, all right? So we've given normal saline. We're also giving sodium bicarb, right? So that's gonna have a little bit of salt in it too so we can, we can do this naturally, all right? I asked you a question earlier about, um, about DKA and fluid volume, and we were giving the normal saline bolus, and then you guys said under 250, we're gonna move over to a D5, and I asked you guys why. Um, and the reason being because if we decrease our sugar too quickly, um, we could get hypoglycemia, right? And the signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia happen quick and they're really ugly, all right? And so we want to make sure that once the blood sugar gets down to a certain level, we're giving them a teeny bit of sugar with it so that it slowly goes down from 250 to about 100, a little bit more slowly, rather than bringing them down super quick and we get really bad hypoglycemia that we can't correct. Fun fact in nursing school, if you were ever looking on your exam and you have the choice of a priority and it is which patient you would see first, and it's a hyperglycemia patient versus hypoglycemia, always pick hypoglycemia. People can be hyperglycemic for forever before they die, okay? But hypoglycemia can happen super, super fast, really quickly and kill your patients. So that's always gonna be your priority over hyperglycemia, okay? Okay, we did it. Isn't this pretty? Nailed this it. This is so wonderful. Okay, so we're gonna take a picture of this and we're gonna post it. If you guys have any questions on DKA, I want you to let me know. But this is what the signs and symptoms of DKA. This is the path, though, of why you have the signs and symptoms, and this is how we as nurses are going to treat it, okay? There's a lot of other nursing care that's involved with DKA, um, so I want you guys to do that as your homework assignment, too, to let me know what other nursing care is involved with DKA, all right? We are out of time today, and so I hope you guys understand very clearly what diabetes is, what DKA is, how that works all together beautifully. Um, if you have any questions, pop on here. Make sure that you share this video with your nursing groups, any of your nursing school friends, because I think we made diabetes pretty easy today. We are now the boss of diabetes, and so I feel like we could treat all things diabetes. All thanks forever. to Kevin Bacon. Yes, and everything comes back to Kevin Bacon, right? So <laughs> I have that insulin. All right, any questions, you can write it down on here, share this video, send it out to people so that they can understand. I think this will make it a whole bunch easier for you guys in the future on nursing school. So any questions, let us know. Real questions? quick, yes. Elizabeth has a question. She okay. goes, is there any point where you do not give the patient or where you would give the patient supplementary oxygen to comfort instead of Kuzma's breathing? Well, if you give the oxygen, remember oxygen and CO2 typically go on a sea salt. So if you're giving them a bunch more oxygen, then they're typically not gonna wanna get rid of their CO2. And we want them to get rid of the CO2. 
So there are very few times in DKA where you're ever gonna administer oxygen, and that would only be if they were truly hypoxic. So if we see that their O2 level is decreased, we would use oxygen, but most of the time we don't for DKA, okay? Another quick thing that they like to ask in nursing school that I wanna forget before we guys leave um, is skin. They like to ask about what the skin assessment is in, um, in hypoglycemia versus hyperglycemia, right? So cold and clammy needs some candy. So hypoglycemia is cold and clammy. Hot and dry, sugar's high. Mm. So when they have hot, dry skin, that's hyperglycemia. You'll see a lot of select on the fly that ask about skin. Don't get it wrong, all right? Don't get it wrong. Yes. You have a couple homework assignments, so go uh, make sure that you fill those out and we'll respond to those. We're going to get these pictures up for you guys. Um, and then we have some really cool videos and some really great Facebook Live workshops coming up. So don't forget to sign up for our ABG one. Um, that one's not going to be on our Facebook like this. That one's going to be on a private Facebook page. So make sure that you sign up for that one. Um, we do have a personality disorder one coming up too. So you guys sign up and get in and learn all the things. Okay? And happy birthday, Jennifer. Thanks oh, for spending your birthday happy with birthday, us. Happy birthday, Jennifer. Y'all have a good day. Bye.